Hi everyone, um, welcome to Focus Software. Hi. My name is Cheryl and I am a development manager here at Focus. Um, today I'm joined by Ashley, uh, Head of Architecture, Ella, who is a recent grad, and John, aka Jay-Z, who like me is a, another development manager. So um, today Ashley is going to tell you a bit about Focus, who we are, what we do, and what we're looking for in our graduates. Ashley will then hand over to Ella, who will share her sort of recent experience working at Focus. And then Jay-Z will wrap us up with a chat about what makes Focus different. And at the end, there'll be time for some Q&A, um, but please feel free to add your questions in the chat as we go along. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Ashley and let's get started. Cool, thank you, Cheryl. Um, yep, so I'm Ashley, I'm Head of Architecture. Um, a little bit about me, I graduated from the University of Canterbury in 2008, uh, a few while ago, before there was the engineering degree, which is Bachelor of Science, or Computer Science then. Um, and I've been in Christchurch, basically working in different tech companies since then. I've been part of Focus for, um, while well, using track of time, is it two years? I think it's two years, uh, two years now. It's been pretty cool, a bit of fun. Uh, and basically, what is Focus? So Focus's background is originally it was established in the UK, and now its head office is actually in Sydney in Australia. And we actually have, um, say, offices around the world. We have offices in America, office in the UK, office in Australia, and in Christchurch in New Zealand. Um, the actual headcount globally, I've lost track of, but I think it's around 300. It, it, it grows pretty quick. It's, um, not sure what it was when I started, but it was a much smaller company. The growth in the last two years has, has been pretty Pretty spectacular. This is the Christchurch office is about two years old, so it's and there's about 80 people now in Christchurch. So it's gone from zero to 80 in that two-year period. It's um, a lot of hiring, a bit of fun. So the what actually does Focus do is they we call it extended planning and analytics. So the easiest way to explain that would be sort of we we solve business problems. Um, so let's imagine you work in a in a retail business and you sell T-shirts, and you want to know you know, which color t-shirt sold the best last month. You have all this data and you have no way to just answer these simple questions. And we just give people the tools to, to answer really often, really simple questions that they currently have no visibility in. And they're like, ah, oh, it's the red t-shirts. We'll order more red t-shirts. People seem to like that. So, and it's just sort of giving that power to, to everyone in the business. So a lot of the other tools in this space, they're only for, for power users. They're not for the sort of the average business user to go in and use the tool. So we really try to target just your average business user to go in and try answer simple questions and just try and make that process really simple. And then the other side of it is sort of financial planning. Um, do I have enough money to pay my staff, basically? So I've been able to make a dashboard where they can log in and just see these numbers at a glance and go, yep, I can sleep easy. The, the, the box are looking good. Um, so that's sort of just trying to make that type of data um, really accessible and simple for people to access. So that's sort of the core of, of what we do. Um, sweet. I think I haven't missed anything. Jay-Z will fill it in if, uh, if I've missed a gap. Cool. Uh, in terms of uh, the actual process and technology to how we work on, so we want focus to be the best place in the world to work, period. Um, so it's so what can we do to try and, and achieve that goal? And we, we try to work really hard in this space, and we don't always hit the mark, but we, we constantly try. So some of the things that we do in this space is we try to give people as much power, empowerment as they can. So when it comes to the process the teams use, you know, do they use Scrum, do they use Scrum, do they use Kanban? It's completely at the team discretion. So we don't force metrics and, and process on the teams. The teams choose their own metric and process. What works for the team um, is up to the team, because what works for one team may not work for another one. And trying to dictate that from higher up and put, and put sort of our metrics on it just always incentivizes the wrong behavior. Um, and, and another thing that we try to do is um, the industry is always changing. So we run 10% time for PD days. So one day within our, with our sprint cycle, which is a two week cadence, is at um, basically employee discretion. So it's like, what, what is happening in the industry? Learn something new, find some cool technology and figure it out and then bring it back. The industry moves too fast for one person to keep on top of everything. This is a way that everyone can sort of learn and improve and find new exciting technologies and help incorporate them into our, into our stack. So that's pretty pretty fun. And we, we and a lot of the teams are pretty religious about their PD day. It's like no meetings are allowed to be booked. It's locked in the calendar and basically 
all communication for that team is cut off for that day. So we, we try and encourage that people use it and, and not use it just to get rid of bugs, if I can actually use it for its intended purpose. Another area that we try and be really um, focused is actually on the sort of commitment to the planet. So we're just going through B Corp certification, which if you're not familiar with that, is to make sure like your, your business practices are ethnical and have an environmental impact. So it's quite a, it's quite a big process to go through. Um, you might have seen an article by Stuff the other day as they have also just had B Corp certification. Um, it's just an international standard that, that businesses try to meet. Uh, I think we're almost there. It's quite, it's quite a process. I'm not 100% sure. Again, Jay-Z will potentially fill in the, the blank. I've I, I forgotten. <laughs> no pressure. Um, so it's a little bit about like a process. And uh, the big other thing is sort of what technology do we use at Focus? So we try to do all new stuff, sort of cloud native, so sort of AWS, and we try to use new technology. So they're releasing new versions of these things and these new benefits to upgrading. And a lot of companies are often quite um, resistant to change for incorporating new things because that takes time. But Staying up to date with small incremental changes normally doesn't take any longer, maybe shorter overall. So we always try to stay up to date with some technologies and try and incorporate new things. In terms of actual languages and, and some of the tooling that we use. So we have um, a large C Sharp application and that's sort of uh, a lot of our more our older stuff is in there and plus some of the, the, the newer stuff. So that's sort of one of the core languages for the backend. The other core language that we use for the backend is Java. Um, we run an AWS for most of our cloud services and AWS is really good Java support. So it's sort of what makes sense for where you're running. So if you're running an, uh, an AWS product, for example, um, AWS Kinesis, your only option is Java. So you might as well make that part of your stack, Java. So those are sort of the main things we use. The backend is um, C Sharp and Java. Just what makes sense for the team. It's sort of the team chooses at the end of the day if they're working on a piece of technology, what backend language do we choose? It's not a total free for all because you don't want every piece of technology under the sun in your, in your stack or else it's just too much to learn. Um, so it's sort of try and be quite careful in what, what new big pieces you bring in. Yeah, just keep the, the simplicity down. Um, in terms of front end, it's all new stuff is in TypeScript. We have some older stuff, which is just um, sort of JavaScript. We try to do everything that's new in TypeScript. And most of our challenges are actually in the browser. We try to make a really rich user experience, which means that what would traditionally be more backend programming has been pushed into the browser. Um, one example is a, is a product that we call um, budgeting and forecasting, which is kind of like Excel. All the formula parsing that, and evaluation is all done in the browser. And if you have a million rows and you have only the RAM in the browser, you have to be very efficient in how you, how you store your data structures to not, not exceed memory. Um, the team that Jay-Z um, sort of manages is very familiar with. <laughs> um, but yeah, so these, uh, and we push back to the open source community with a lot of these changes. So that particular library, we um, currently just actually pushing a big PR to a project called Typefast Bitset, um, which, is try which improves its memory efficiency. <laughs> but it's, if we see a bug, we don't, we don't shy away from going, oh, we'll fork it and not expose that we use it. No, we're quite open. So that's what we use and we push it back to the community. By then we don't have to maintain our own branch, it's just a collaborative effort to fix the bugs and maintain them. Cool. Um, so that's sort of most of, the, most of the stuff about focus. So it's sort of what we're looking for in graduates is the main thing is we're just looking, looking for passion uh, in technology, uh, especially. So people that are eager to learn, they wanna, they wanna engage, like programming is a very collaborative industry, it's not, it's not often as it's depicted in, in movies. It is, it is a, it's a team event. <laughs> um, so we're looking for people that are just passionate in that field and, and willing to engage and collaborate is the main thing we're actually looking for, people that just show interest. Um, so that's, that's really it. Cool. Um, do you have any questions? We'll be here at the end. Over to you, Allah. Thanks, Ashley. Um, hi, everyone. Um, hi anyone on YouTube who's watching this in the future. Um, uh, as Cheryl said, um, I'm a graduate of Focus at the moment, but I also started through the internship program. So hopefully I can give you guys a perspective on both of those. 
Um, so I was at UC for four years. Um, the first two years of that, I was studying civil engineering before I quite late in that process realized that actually that wasn't what I was interested in at all. And what I really cared about was software and programming. Um, and so then I did two years of software engineering. Um, and then um, once I started working, decided actually I didn't want to do my postgrad year of software engineering and switch my degree again to computer science. Um, so I started um, an internship at Focus in November um, and I got placed on the NextGen team, um, which was such a cool place for me to be because um, NextGen as a team is kind of building out some replacements for our existing systems, which use older technology and um, creating a more um, modern system, which is faster and more efficient. Um, so it's super interesting because it's quite cutting edge. Um, and I also got to work with a lot of the stuff that is most interesting to me, like um, databases and parallel processing and cloud computing. So it was awesome to be able to learn about those um, and to look at like the, the really big data stuff that you don't really get exposed to at uni at all because it's like too difficult to do in that university environment. Um, and so during my internship, I was put on more of an independent project, um, which was the case for most of the interns because we have a really big complicated code base here. Um, and it's very difficult in that three month internship to learn enough of the code base to be able to do something that's useful um, and helps you learn. Um, and so the project I was working on was um, because the new system we're building um, doesn't have many users yet. Um, I was building a framework we could use to simulate what it would look like when we have thousands of people using the product simultaneously um, and also allow us to simulate lots of different scenarios of how users would use our product or um, how it would react if there was some problem in our infrastructure or something else went wrong. Um, and so like none of the intern projects were just busy work. Like this is something that's, um, even though it was an independent project, um, it's something my team's still using now um, and has been used in lots of different ways. And I think even one of the other teams here is adopting it now. So that's really cool being able to do products, work on a project that's actually useful to the, and important to the company even during an internship. Um, and so, yeah, towards the end of my internship, I realized that for me, I was actually getting more out of working here than being at uni. Um, so I applied for the grad program um, and there was a bit of an application process, but it was definitely a lot more chill than um, what you'd expect for applying to a grad program at a company you'd never worked for because I already knew everyone here. Um, and then um, there's four rotations in the grad program, but for my first rotation, which I'm on at the moment, I was able to um, continue working on the next gen team, which I've been doing my internship with. Um, but um, the difference was that um, before I'd still been like, I was still very much like included in the team, even though I was working on an independent project um, and still like participating in all the planning and decisions and stuff. Um, but now I actually get to work on the same projects as the rest of the team and within the same code base. So that's been really cool, but also very challenging because there is so much to learn. Um, I feel like there's, a lot of support, not just for grads, but for everyone here. There's people who are very ready to help whenever you have a problem. Um, but you also like do need to be ready to challenge yourself and extend yourself here because you do get pushed to continue um, growing and improving the whole time you're here. Um, and I've been able to do um, a bit of back end work and a bit of DevOps work as well, which is something that I never thought I'd be interested in. It's something I didn't get to experience at uni, but um, I tried a bit of it and found it super interesting, like building that cloud infrastructure. Um, I really like 
how it allows you to see how all the different parts of a system fit together. Um, and because I was interested in that, um, focus is quite flexible. Like they want people to be able to work on what they're interested in because that's where you'll be the most innovative and be able to create the best things. And so um, when I was interested in that, it was pretty easy for me to dig into that further and be able to do more work on that and keep learning that. Um, yeah, so apart from the work, the other thing about focus, which um, I find really cool is the people here. Um, it, the environment here, it doesn't feel like any other job I've ever worked at. Um, it's so casual and everyone's so friendly. Um, I've been able to, um, I built Lego with my team a couple of weeks ago to celebrate reaching one of our goals. Um, and I've been able to kill my boss in Among Us. Uh, <laughs> um, but I've made so many good friends here. I'm really into bouldering and I've got at least 10 people here to come with me to my climbing gym. And some of them are better than me now, which is a bit disappointing, but it's been a fantastic experience meeting all the people here. Um, especially like there's so many, because most of the people in the Christchurch office um, have started at, at Focus in the last year or so, um, as it's a new office, there's so many different experiences. Everyone's worked with different technologies and in different environments and processes. Um, and so you get to learn from people with such different experiences and ways of thinking. Um, and such creative ideas. So I feel like it's an amazing environment to learn in and to work in. Um, thanks very much. I'm going to hand over to Jay-Z now, who's gonna tell you a bit about what makes Focus different. Awesome. Cool, thank you very much, Ella. Um, but both of you guys are hard acts to follow. I, I, I'm, this is, I'm feeling tense now as a consequence, but hopefully I can demonstrate some of the um, as mentioned, bits that uh, are different about focus. Um, and I'm hopefully going to do that by example, including this first one, which normally when you're presenting stuff, you typically do it via a PowerPoint slide deck and then share that and get fall asleep as you're working through stuff. Instead, I'm going to use bits of paper. Um, this may or may not work, which highlights the next bullet point. Um, we take risks. So <laughs> it's one important bit, especially if you're you know, a group that is still working as a startup. You need to be able to take risks in order to innovate, in order to do new stuff. You need to have a gamble if you want to try and do something different. And I think that's an important um, bit to highlight that is a point, in, point of difference for us. Um, and not only that, you want to be able to do that in a, in a space that's safe. Um, you want to be able to ask questions. You want to be able to put out ideas. You want to be able to do stuff that's different. All of that is taking risks. And that's why you can see one of the big things that we do sponsor is a safe environment in which to do so. Um, and I think that's a, that's a key and important difference in and of itself. Um, which brings me to point number two, um, transparency. So one of the big bits that we do, yeah, I'm going to keep doing this, by the way. Um, <laughs> one of the big bits we do highlight is trying to keep things um, transparent. It's part of building trust. It's part of sharing stuff that you work with others. Um, and as another point of example, speaking of taking risks, this could go pear-shaped, but here's a behind the scenes view of what our office looks like. This is how this is currently working. So you can actually see <laughs> our fellow teammates behind me. Um, and also the screen that is now showing everyone being shared at the same time. I have not prepared anything in terms of this walk around, but if nothing else, for transparency, this is what the office looks like. Huzzah! Some lovely walls, some lovely developers, a lovely area in which to work in, some lovely colours. Um, and <laughs> I guess, if nothing else, random bits of artwork, um, random seating, and random big areas to work in. So you can kind of highlight and get a feel, if nothing else, for the space in which we work, um, possibly even the style in which we work. Uh, but kind of a, just a nice example to see, I guess, what focus is about, where we are, um, a little bit behind the scenes, hopefully something a little bit more dynamic than a PowerPoint slide deck to watch and, and watch and check out. But I was half tempted to sit down here, but all my uh, little bits of paper are over there. So now I'm winging it. 
So also it leads me to the, to the third bit of paper that I've got, which I'm happy that I've brought as well, which is this. Um, we try and have a bit of fun with the stuff that we do. It's important to have a bit of fun because fun is usually where you get your most creativity from. Um, if you're in a space that is fun and you enjoy it, a, you're likely to be doing cool, good things for the company and you're likely to be learning and growing yourself. So um, it is important to do that. Also, speaking of what Ella mentioned earlier, and I think Ash was reaching for the same thing. Yes, we do have a lot of bits of Lego that demonstrate the stuff that we've been doing of late. So um, I don't know if this represents anything in my part, if it's my, my dark side coming through or not, but um, we'll see how that one pans out. Maybe, maybe Darth can keep me keep me company in the background there, there we go. Um, so one other point of difference is the fact that I think, yeah, having fun is important and, and it's part of our culture. Um, it's even sponsored at literally our CEO level down. So Marvelous Miles, our CEO, is one of the lead sponsors of having fun and culture. Fun is one of our core values. So it's not often you work for a company where that's actually highlighted as something that is key to the work that we start doing. So very worth calling out. Um, also, another good one to highlight, Best managers. <laughs> um, oops, showed a little bit too much on that one there. Um, key point there though, uh, it's, like, it's true, but you know, whatever, um, is, is the fact that having good development managers is important, um, given especially that one of the key roles we have as development managers, is developing those people that we work with. So there's a lot of one-on-ones, there's a lot of talking with the, with the team that we have. Um, there's a lot of investment that we as dev managers have in our people. Um, we also work with, our, with the teams as a whole and with process to, to help improve the way that we work. But the key number one value is, is facilitating the individuals in our groups. So there's a lot of personal, um, I guess, work that we do in terms of career growth, the tasks that you're working on, the direction you may want to take things um, and feedback. So key elements that we do that we like to call out as being something that's obviously highlighted is very, very important um, in, in our world. Um, also piggyback some of the comments that um, both Ash and Ella were talking about earlier. PD time is a, is a key thing we look at for personal development. Um, and so encouraging the fact that we do have a day a fortnight where you get to work on your own stuff to learn and grow and, and actually um, and share, I guess, some of those experiences with others. So yeah, key element that we work on around that piece. Um, more, more slides, I feel like, you might not have got a PowerPoint slide deck, but you definitely got more of these. Intern and grad program. So again, we've mentioned a lot of bits and pieces around this. Um, the key bit that I'd probably call out as a point of difference is that for a lot of companies, internships especially, and sometimes grad programs, are kind of the, the thing you get around to when, when you've now got a free moment um, and you're working on you know, the highest priority business process or the highest priority product. And sometimes this gets neglected. That actually was very different for us um, in our internship that we did very recently. So every intern that we had, we had about six interns, all had a lot of um, work done ahead of time to actually pitch, pick a project within each development team. So the interns weren't isolated and off in a corner and doing their own stuff. They were very much part of the group. And I think that was really important to give everyone as an intern some real experience in terms of working on a project with a team and doing something meaningful. Um, and that, as Ella highlighted, extended into the grad side of things. So now, same sort of story there. We're looking to actually make sure there's a grad rotation that exists, um, getting more knowledge shared, a little bit more training shared around the piece, um, and just providing that opportunity to, to get um, both a breadth and depth of knowledge early. I've got all this stuff written down, it's really helping. Um, so, and I guess two points highlighted out of here, depth and breadth. If you're early on in your career, from at least my standpoint, but a lot of the dev managers will probably back this up, it's the key thing that you wanna be looking at when you're when you're learning you really want to get those foundations right so getting experience on a variety of work but also having a bit of experience to go down deep on particular examples so you can potentially be the expert on a given task or area or domain or skill um, this is really key and as ash talked about our tech stack it is in some ways um, wide and varied um, but the key bit i'll point out is that we're a company that's, that has both new and old. Um, Focus has been around for 
actually over 20 years, 20 year old startup, don't often hear that. But there's a lot of legacy that exists in our code base. So it gives a, a lot of opportunity to, to learn what it's like to, look, to work on legacy. And every single software developer on this planet has had that experience and it's valuable and you wanna learn how to work with that. And at the same time, there's a lot of greenfield projects as well. There's a lot of brand new products we're working on, a lot of, a lot of edge cases. Like we said, there's, there's a lot of risk taking and trying new stuff because that's how you get that innovation happening. So you get both of those examples kicking in, which is really cool as well. Um, I'm getting close to the end, by the way. A huge growth, international impact. This is my two for one slide, I guess. So uh, keep it out of this focus right now from an international standpoint, we're represented probably across three main geographies like we highlighted the UK, the US and Australia slash New Zealand slash APAC. Um, they're the areas that we work in and around. Development team wise, Christchurch is actually our biggest development team. Um, so in and around a hundred, Esk likely will be, depending on what time you're uh, watching this YouTube video, that number could have changed. But um, we, there's a lot of folk here in Christchurch. We are definitely growing that out. It's one of our central development realms. Um, we also have a lot of folk in Australia that we also work with as well. So part of our working process is finding out how to make that fun and interesting and productive. So there's a lot of um, opportunity to work with folk outside of Australia as well, uh, Australia, outside of New Zealand. Um, so yeah, nice wee chance around that one too. Also, you get to work with not only devs, but designers, product managers, DevOps, support. So usual areas, but really trying to connect with other groups as part of whatever you're doing on a day-to-day -day, um, development task or development project. So nice keep it there, which leads me to my second last slide. Collaborative environment. Ash actually touched on this one himself. And I haven't even shared these with him. So we must be on the same, same headspace, which is good. Um, collaborative environment. And if there's one message I'd want to give out to anyone from, from uni that's looking at this, I know as a, as a uh, university member, um, predominantly it's all about self-assessment. You want to be, whatever you're doing, you don't want to be looking over your shoulder or plagiarizing off someone else because there's big smacks if you do that. In the workspace, it's the opposite. You would likely be desperately wanting to work with others. You want to learn from others. You want to collaborate. You want to work as a team. That's the one biggest change that even I recall transitioning from a uni environment into a work environment. And so part of the stuff we do encourage is that collaboration. It is working with other groups, with other teams, with other individuals, and just learning, learning through that process, um, which ultimately leads me to my last slide. We work on stuff. That, I don't know if me posing with it helps, but... We work on stuff that matters and 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 also like even ash highlighted the stuff that we do um in a nutshell is is i guess built to make uh life easier for people so um we ultimately we create tools that help people um see what a business is doing um and to get insights on 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 what's going well and if stuff isn't going well it's to basically be able to take action on, on those bits. So the simpler the tool for doing that, the better the business is gonna be positioned for, for fixing stuff going wrong or keeping doing the stuff that's going right. And that's what we help provide, just a mechanism that allows anyone in a business, given that the data that they've got, to try and get those insights out of it so they can do something with it. So that is kind of my spiel in a, in a nutshell. Hopefully I've covered off on enough bits and pieces that helps I want to paint a little bit of a picture of who we are at Focus and what we do. Um, so if nothing else, I'm going to turn my speakers back up. And what I should be able to do is I do actually have a slide to share. I did lie. Um, there's one whole slide to share right at the end of this. And this is the bit where I probably should have opened it earlier because it would have been a lot easier to share at that point. But I can cheat. I've got, I've got a backup plan. Check this out. If I go to my preferences. Oh, there's my PowerPoint preferences. This is the bit where Jay Z's not as prepared as he probably should have been. Oh, well, you live and learn as you go. But here's my slide for the day. If I sit out over here, you can now see it's QA time. So if there is any QA that exists, or is there, if there are any questions that want to be raised, now is the time to raise them. That the floor is open. Is anyone wanting to highlight or ask anything out there? I will say you can uh, chat in the chat if you're not comfortable uh, speaking out loud. Very true. 
as those bits and pieces come in. Um, the other thing to highlight, and I can point to these now. Oh, that's kind of handy. I didn't think of that earlier. Um, if you do have any more questions, you can either check out our website, go to www.focussoftware.com slash careers. Alternatively, send an email to our careers um, email address. Nikki, our people and culture slash HR lead, will get straight back onto you on, uh, on responses around those. Um, so yeah, also counts if you're now watching this um, in the future off YouTube, all the same stuff exists. If you're looking for more information, that's where to grab it from. Um, and if you want to just check in, we're all um, available to answer and respond to any questions that you've got. got. Got a big one in the chat there for you. Oh, big one in the chat. Woo, cool. Thank you, Haley. That's fantastic. You've gone into detail. I love this. All right, a few questions. Let's see if we can tackle a couple of these. Hopefully, I don't need to answer all of them. But um, what are the different development teams? All right, I'll start with that one. Unless unless Ash or Ella or Cheryl would want to respond to any of these, we can we can play around, or I can dive straight in and give you my response. You can do one. I'll, I'll take I'll take the second one. <laughs> Righto. I'll do the first one then. Different development teams. I'd say if I had to summarise it. There's a couple of pr product development teams. So they're teams that are predominantly working on um, products like you can see over here to do with stuff like budgeting and forecasting. So tools that people use to budget the next 12 months. There are tools that people use to look at the last 12 months worth of financial data, which is our financial statements product. Um, there's a core product that we have, which is our core analytics product, does pretty little graphs and dashboards and ways to, to look at information given core, core systems. There's also platform um, teams. They work on a little bit more of the, the fundamentals or the core work that we've got. Um, it includes a quote unquote next gen team who are working on some of the next generation of tools that we have. Um, a lot of these, like I mentioned, are teams that are split across New Zealand and Australia, which is really cool as well. Um, there's even reps that we've got around the world. There's, there's uh, devs in Slovakia, devs in the UK. Um, we've, got, we've got people that work on a lot of these bits and pieces. So a little bit product, a little bit back end, a little bit of everything. I, I might right, say a little bit to that, actually, Jay-Z. Yeah. Um, we, we like to give the team a problem. Basically, they get a business problem to solve. And then the team works together to solve the problem. So there's not someone higher up saying this is what the team works on. Each team has a product manager who was the person that's doing all the, all the market research, talking to the customers, trying to figure out where are the pain points, what are the competitors doing? Pretty, pretty crucial role. And then they find the problems and they bring those problems back to the team. And then they work together with the developers, with the designer to go, how do we solve the problems that the customers have? Um, find that teams work better if you give them problems as opposed to here's a solution go implement it. Um, so they each team sort of can operate quite independently in their problem space. Um, cool. So question number two. Uh, so what is the grad role interview process like? Uh, how is it different to the intern role process? So the recruitment process is um, well for either role is is you fill out the form or send an email and Nikki gets back to you and there'll be a brief um, conversation with, with Nikki. And uh, after that, there will be a technical exercise. So we have a intern technical exercise and a grad technical exercise. The intern one being a bit simpler and the grad one. Um, we'll probably refresh them for, for this year. Last year, they were, um, remember what they were? What was your one, Ala? It was... <laughs> Um, my one was processing um, some data and getting some statistics out of that. It was just in Java. That's right. You had to find like the distribution of first names and last names or ages or something. So it's like Parza, Jason File, and, and answer simple questions. So it's reasonably like reasonably straightforward exercise. And it's the last year it was a take home exercise. It was just given online. We might do the same thing. We might find these a, a nicer tool. Um, but it worked quite well last year. Yeah, so and then so that exercise will then be um, reviewed and assuming that that review goes well there'll be a, another series of interviews there will be an interview like a technical interview and a and then a um, like a, maybe a manager interview as well there's only two interviews for the definitely for the graduates the interns may only just have one interview a combined technical and manager um, interview 
sort of the process. Uh, any other questions around that? I guess we'll go and how many grade roles are available. Um, don't actually know the numbers that we that would have, but probably I'd say at least similar to last year, which was I think we hired how many was six. We hired six grads I think last year and six interns. Um, it was actually around more because we find people that we that fit more than actual number of slots, which is, which is, which is always nice. And I think there's one that we did miss um, in terms of, I guess, work flexibility and flexibility in terms of number of days in the office or working from home. So I guess in short, yes, there is some flexibility around that at the moment. Even with the pan around the office you would have seen earlier, not all the desks were in use. And that's because some people are literally working from home today. So there is a little bit of flexibility around that. Um, Honestly, the, the the bit there is working with the manager in, in terms to figure out what works best for you and what works best for the team as well. Um, obviously, some uh, teams, it is actually really beneficial to be in a space where you're easy, easily um, asking questions, um, especially as someone new and a grad. Um, the easiest way to learn is literally by going, hey, so-and-so right beside me, um, this bit's weird. Can you help me out on that? So. I would personally encourage as someone that's learning and, 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 and onboarding, being in a space where it makes that part of the process easier. Um, but there's obviously a lot of flexibility as well, because honestly, not everyone's in the office on every day. So it's a nice way to balance that one out as well. So that would be my, my tip. I guess I'll uh, just add a little bit onto, onto that as well. Um, like we like people to come in the office, but we have we, we try to run really process and policy light. So we have no policy or process and you must come in the office. We see it as a requirement of like the management is how do we make a space where people want to work, not that they have to work. So we like people to come in, we'd like them to collaborate and have fun. Um, but so how can we make that happen? What can we do in the office so people come in? A lot of people seem to come in on a Tuesday because these um, biscuit Tuesday, every every Tuesday, these free biscuits, is piles of them. And a lot of people seem to come in on Friday for Friday drinks. So um, maybe if we just put biscuits every day of the week, maybe the office would always be packed. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, sort of what can we what can we do? And we do that it's across the board. Like we don't want people make mistakes, as, for example, and we don't want to add a process that punishes everyone for the odd mistake. So it's just like deal with a mistake and, and move on. Um, no one wants to manage all that process. Very I think cool. there's one for you, Ella. Um, how what was how did you find the process when you applied? It was one of the best interview processes I've been through. I get really nervous about interviews, um, but I think one of mine was with you, Ashley, um, and then also with our hiring ma manager, Nikki, and one of the other managers. Um, but it was all just um, very friendly and chill, and it didn't feel like a high pressure interview. Um, and I also, I definitely prefer having a take-home technical assessment as opposed to we don't have a live coding interview. Um, yeah, so I found that a much nicer experience being able to use Google and not being under that pressure of um, having someone watching you while you code. So it was a really good experience. There were quite a lot of applicants. So um, I did have to wait a bit to get a response between some interviews. And so if you are applying thinking of applying this year, that's probably something you'll be prepared to be prepared for. Yeah, I think we had 80 submissions. Right. Quite a lot of work, Just many interviews a week, uh, many interviews a day some days. Um, so what makes, another one is what makes an application stand out when applying for either grade or intern role? Um, big, big one I mentioned earlier is like passion, just enthusiasm, and it doesn't have to be in tech, it's just, you know, just are they, can they show passion and, and anything could be bouldering just some some hobby some outside interest that basically we don't want we don't want everyone to be the same we want diversity we want, we want variety so if someone's super passionate about something i've never heard of it's like ah oh, it's great you know you find out interesting things and, and the interview process so that's a big one are people enthusiastic uh when it comes to the tech exercise is it basically is it big thing is it's readable is it is it simple can it be followed uh, like in the industry you don't want super fancy complicated stuff that no one understands because you don't want to maintain that. So it's actually, here's the problem. Have you solved it in an easy to follow and simple way? And here's my cat. As you can see, I'm working from home. Uh, thank you, Coco. Uh, so that's that's really what makes them stand out. It's, it's um, 
the exercises that solve the problem in a simple way and and then and then for you process they they just show a little passion and enthusiasm. All righty, do we have any more questions, thoughts, bullets, cats, anything else that we want to try and put on the screen at this point in time? Cool. I guess there was one point I actually missed in my one, which was the sort of the motto that we have when it comes to focus, which is fun, fulfilling forever. Um, it's probably, probably should have started with that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll lead with it next time it's a learning yeah we'll lead with it next time uh, and i guess to break that down is that like i said we want we want the, it'd be fun to work at we want people to be fulfilling and the way we see that happen is really that growth and learning the whole time always learning something new to try and make the job fulfilling and the forever uh can be a scary word but that's not really saying that we want people to work at focus forever like ideally we like, would like people to make a long-term commitment to work at focus but the other side of it is we want people to learn things that are useful forever so if they do go off to another career, another opportunity, that they're taking something with them from their time at Focus. People haven't stagnated at Focus, like their careers have advanced. Um, and you'll see that on our website, you'll see the fun for Forever forever um, mentioned. Cool. Uh, if there's no more, maybe we'll finish off there, give you guys a couple of minutes of your day back. Thank you very much for that presentation. It was really good. I um, loved the, diff well, the way you guys did it. It's a lot different to everyone else. And um, nice seeing the cat pop up in the, in the end there. <laughs> There's another one. She's been clawing me the entire time, wanting me to pet her. <laughs>